Welcome to the Michigan Runner Show. Join us each time as we explore the people, the places, and the events that shape our great sport. Hi, I'm Mary Beth Dillon Butler. I'm here with Francie Crocker Goodrich, and we're at an evening reuniting all the Michigams and honoring Coach Red Simmons. And Francie's been good enough to share with us just a bit about her running history and how she got involved with the Michigams and Coach Simmons. We'd like to know a bit about what he's meant in your life. Uh, well, I think I wouldn't have had the, the quality of life I had or all the, of course, all the wonderful experiences as an athlete if it hadn't been for Coach Simmons and his wife Betty. Um, I was their hobby. I was the first athlete that they were looking for to see if they could find someone to coach uh, to the Olympics. And so that was what was presented to me when I was 14. And thanks to my mother, who had a sense of what that could mean for me, even though she knew nothing about athletics, she said, uh, you know, you really want to have the chance to be good at something. And that was it. And it was a spark that obviously ignited a whole world of, of opportunity for all these women and women like them all over the country. Red was one of the coaches of maybe no more than two dozen in the entire country who started track clubs for girls. And it just exploded into the kinds of opportunities that not only we had, but that everyone has now. So that's, I mean, and he made my life wonderful <laughs> by having these opportunities. Highlight for us, Francie, your running achievements, of which I know there are many. Maybe you could um, just talk a bit about your greatest thrill in the sport of running. Uh, well, obviously, I think probably it would have to be the Olympics. Being in two Olympic teams, or even if I had only been in one, uh, was just obviously the experience of a lifetime, uh, being able to compete in that arena. Uh, and then I'd say maybe on another side, something that lasts forever. I always like to say my picture is in the Encyclopedia Britannica and you can go in the dusty old stacks of any library with English speaking volumes in it and there, there I am. So I kind of like that too, but, but really the competition and the training, uh, I think even the training that we got to do was such fun. It was so hard and you accomplish so much just by being an athlete, even without competition at the end of it. I guess that's what I'd have to say is what I think back and what means the most. And lastly, Francie, can you tell us, maybe for the benefit of some of our younger viewers, girls in particular, a bit about what it took to get women's sports on the map Perhaps some of them don't even realize that it wasn't like it is today. Uh, that is true. When I was a club runner, even with the opportunity that I had, uh, women would come up to me who were older and would say, oh, I wish I'd had the chance to do what you're doing. And of course, I realized that women of years just before I, and of course all the generations before, never had the opportunity to say, I want to be an athlete and have a place to go and do so. And in fact, barriers were constantly being thrown in, in women's attempts to do that, whether it was riding bicycles in the 1890s or, or all those years in between where we really had nothing that we could do um, that wasn't just little pockets of opportunity. And that's what these little pockets of opportunity that these track clubs were ended up becoming, which was a, an entire sport that's accepted by everybody. So, uh, you know, I think it's hard for young people who have all these opportunities before them and have to choose uh, to realize that the, no opportunities existed. So it is an amazing thing that's happened in a generation. Well, we're in debt to trailblazers and pioneers and women running like you, Francie. Congratulations you on much. all you've accomplished. Thank you.